Today on Beers TV Investigates, we have the second episode of our T5 longevity testing. When do these things really need to be changed? After that, giving away a brand new type of continuous duty dosing pump that I think is gonna change the way that some people reef. Hi, I'm Ryan, your host of Beers TV Investigates, a weekly YouTube series which explores popular reefing theories, products, methods, what the manuals are missing, with a focus on putting them to the test, and then rate that theory based on our scale of reef fancy to reef certainty. Today, we're gonna answer that age-old question. Do you really need to change your T5 bulbs every nine to 12 months? We all know they function much longer than that, but there's presumed spectrum shifts and par losses in that time. However, today we're going to share the results of over two years of simulated use. In addition to that, we're going to put one additional assumption to the test. Does dimming T5 bulbs or operating them at wattages significantly below what they're designed for really cause them to wear out prematurely? At the end here, I'm going to give some pretty direct advice as when do I would personally change my T5 bulbs. I can tell you right now that they last a lot longer than many reefers think. To test the bulb life, we use an ATI Sun Power running without the splash shield and fan set to 4.5, which produces pretty close to ideal par output. This was designed to find some type of middle ground between the two most popular ways that reefers run T5s, T5 retro kits inside a hood, and the ATI Sun Power fixture. So this might not perfectly match your situation, but I think this might be one of the overall better windows into bulb life and spectrum shift over time that's been shared. We selected two different brands of bulbs and two different common spectrums as well, with the ATI Blue Plus and the Fuller Spectrum ATI Aqua Blue Special, as well as the Giesman Atinic Blue and Aqua Blue Azure. Keep in mind that these bulbs are all different spectrums, so they're really only in competition with themselves. Some spectrums which are designed to be pleasing to the eye, not necessarily higher par than another. The testing apparatus was just a two bulb retro kit with a spectrum and PAR sensors two feet from the bulbs. We didn't use the reflectors on the bulbs because they can create sensor hot spots. All the bulbs were burned in for 100 hours prior to testing. We've been running the bulbs for nine months straight, nearly 24 hours a day, with three seven hour and 45 minute cycles a day, and a 15 minute cool down periods between the cycles to allow for typical cool down and power cycles. So at the end of this, we're looking at a typical eight hour cycle and looking at about 27 months of simulated use. If you power your T5s with longer or shorter photo periods, I would adjust accordingly. Starting with the ATI Blue Plus, which is easily the number one seller, we finished a simulated 27-month run, or just over 2,000 hours of operation, with a total loss output of 26.31%. So there was a pretty significant drop right at that two-year mark. So based on PAR alone, if the T5s were the primary component of my lighting, like an ATI T5 fixture, I think a 20% drop in output over a two-year mark is probably a decent point to change them out. Mostly because I don't want to deal with the dramatic shock that can happen from going lower and bulb changes with a sudden 30 or 40 percent increase in par. However, if they're just some fill lights and some type of hybrid solution, I guess it may not matter as much, but in that case it's also pretty cheap to change them out, so I think I'd still change them out before they hit that 30 percent loss of output. However, we're also considering the much discussed spectrum shift as well. Most of us have been told at some point or another that the bulbs shift to the yellow or red over time. Many believe that promotes algae growth or even go as far as to say that increased algae in their tanks is the visual cue to change the bulbs. So we tested spectrum monthly as well and I can tell you while there is a very subtle change in spectrum over time, the most notable being a tiny amount of near infrared, I don't think it'd be possible for the human eye to perceive a visual difference this subtle. That's not to say that reefers are not seeing a real change, but in the case of this bulb, the shift to the yellow is much more likely to be the result of yellowing water, which is common in almost every tank that doesn't use carbon or ozone. Yellow water is also loosely related to overall water quality and algae growth as well, so it might be part of that perception. Overall, I don't see a major shift in spectrum with the blue plus bulbs. Okay, moving on to the Fuller Spectrum ATI Aqua Blue Special, which has the visual perception of being much wider. At the end of a 27 months, we saw a 22.86% loss in PAR output. It was about the 18 month mark where they crossed a 20% loss barrier, but it seems to have leveled out at this point. Based on PAR alone, I think the 18 month mark does seem like a reasonable place to change them out, but I wouldn't blame anyone who wanted to go a bit longer. Next, looking at the Spectrum Shift, 
Now this bulb you can see is much fuller spectrum and there's a very noticeable decrease in the blue output and increase in the green, orange, and red spectrum mix or ratio of each other, as well as a more pronounced increase in the infrared range. I do think this is something that the average human eye could see with a side-by-side -side comparison, but it would take a fairly trained eye to see a shift like this over a couple years without that side-by-side -side comparison. Related to spectrum shift, it doesn't seem to be a magic place where I would suggest changing them at any particular point because a spectrum shift does seem to get progressively worse over time. It might be that some of the less desirable peaks are actually increasing output over time, but it could just as easily be potentially or more likely that the blue end of the spectrum is just decreasing faster than the other peaks, so the ratio is changing. If it is indeed the later and the blue spectrum simply decreasing faster, visually the tank will look more yellow, but there really isn't more green, yellow, orange, or red light driving potential algae growth, and it could be more of a coincidence than a direct result. Really the only spectrum peak here that's likely to increase algae growth is the one around the 600s. At least for some people, I think it might be a bit more likely that old bulbs might correspond with other maintenance and changing them comes with other changes like carbon or water changes, which can give the perception of a cleaner tank with less algae. One last bit, even these spectrum shifts, while noticeable, are pretty darn subtle. The intentional spectrum shifts people see with LEDs on a daily basis are 100 times more impactful. Just something to think about as we consider both T5 bulb spectrum shifts as well as the importance of how we set up our LEDs. So only speaking for myself, I would consider PAR output and personal visual preferences as my primary consideration for bulb changeouts rather than the spectrum shift itself. Now giving a quick look at the Giesemann Atinic Blue at 27 months, we were seeing a 31% drop in PAR output, but at about the 18 month mark, we crossed that 20% loss in output. There was a slight increase in spectrum change over time, but again, this largely blue bulb has no meaningful change in spectrum, certainly not something that the human eye is likely to notice. Then looking at the Giesemann Aqua Blue Azure, very similar PAR results, 27.98% loss in PAR output over 27 months but then cross a 20% point at the 18 month mark as well. Then looking at spectrum again, very similar to the same performance as the other full spectrum bulb we looked at today. Over time, a shift down in blue and corresponding increase in the ratio of green, yellow, orange, and red peaks. Only thing I'll note here is if you do care about those peaks and the overall ratio, the Giesemann Aqua Blue Azure starts off with much lower ratio of the green, yellow, orange, and red peaks to begin with. So starting lower is the easiest way to achieve that. However, the Aqua Blue Azure is going to be visually deeper blue because of that. So to answer the first question of the day, do you really need to change out your T5 bulbs 9 to 12 months? I'm going to give this one a rare zero. In my mind, a complete re-fantasy, and if I had to give one blanket recommendation of when to change the bulbs, it'd be around 15 to 18 months, which is either before or right after many of these bulbs see their most significant drop in output. However, as long as you know what you're doing and how to account for it, I wouldn't blame anyone for going a bit longer with some bulb types as well. Knowing this, the 10,000 plus T5 bulbs a year we sell is probably about to be cut by a third to a half, and I don't think our CFO is going to consider this the best use of time and company resources I've spent, but in the end, I don't think any of us want to waste time and resources changing out bulbs prematurely, and it's just best to act on data. Now looking at the second question, does dimming T5 bulbs or operating them at wattages significantly below what they were designed for really cause them to wear out prematurely? In this case, we ran two sets of ATI Blue Plus bulbs on a dimmable ATI SunPower T5 fixture, one set to ramp from 0 to 100 for four hours, and then down from 100 to 0 for four hours, three times a day. With the other set of bulbs, we wanted to exaggerate the effect of running them well below the rated wattages, and then ramp them from 0 to 50%, and then from 50 down to 0% three times a day, meaning a majority of each cycle is pretty low wattages. If reduced wattages does affect lamp life, it should be exaggerated here. So starting with the bulbs, which ran from 0 to 100% and dimmed across a wide range of much of which is closer to normal operating ranges, the bulbs actually lasted a lot longer. In this case, we didn't see a 20% loss in output until the 27-month mark, I mean over two years. So this is only one data point, but unless we were provided with other data points which indicated otherwise, I think it's reasonable to believe that dimming bulbs like this did not reduce usable bulb life. 
In fact, it seemed like they lasted about 30% longer. As you might imagine, nothing noticeable to the spectrum either. I personally wouldn't be concerned about dimming bulbs this way. Now looking at the more aggressive dimming option of going from zero to 50% and almost always driving the bulbs way below their designed operating range, you can see they had an even smaller drop in output, only 9.14% after a year, and it looked like they might actually last longer, but then they failed completely and wouldn't turn back on. In that time, they also had no meaningful change in spectrum. Bulbs burn out all the time for all kinds of reasons, so I'm nowhere near suggesting that running them this low caused the premature complete failure. But based on this, if you experience the same type of thing at home, I might consider not running them that low all the time. In fact, if that's the case, I'm sure the reefing community would love to hear you share those experiences. So answering today's question, does dimming T5 bulbs or operating them at wattages significantly below what they're designed for really cause them to wear out prematurely? I'm going to give this one a 3 out of 10 and probably more of a re-fantasy than certainty. It would look like in normal use conditions, they might actually last longer, presumably from the reduced load, but it's possible that running them too low might cause a premature catastrophic failure. Over on Reef to Reef, we started a poll on when reefers change their T5 bulbs. It would be interesting to see what the community thinks and what they've been doing historically. If you run them longer or shorter than what we've been discussing here today, do us all a favor and share your results. I can't let a week go by without giving away something cool. T5 bulbs are a little boring, so this week we're going to give away a continuous duty FX STP peristaltic dosing pump from Comore. The key word here is continuous duty, meaning they can be on 24-7, and I think this is going to be a calcium reactor owner's dream come true. If you want to win one for free, hit that link in the lower left or head on over to the site, click on specials and deals, and then free stuff. As always, if you like what we're doing here, let us know with a quick thumbs up and subscribe with that notification bell because we release new reefing content every week with gear spotlights every Wednesday and investigates every Friday. See you next week where we bring the chemical purity question to a close with calcium additives.